He'll he'll break your heart sometimes, but what he does is he's electric when he gets the ball in his hands. So it's my comp. This is my comp. Yours. Yes. I, 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 I don't I don't know why I'm so surprised. You are the biggest Quinn Ewers glazer for a non Texas fan that I've ever interacted with. I, I'm I mean I like fun quarterbacks. You're such so, oh, you're such a hack. You're such a hack. I I and now back to your regular programming. If you speak better to yourself. <laughs> you showed up for like probably the dumbest conversation we've ever had on this show. Let's have that smile again. Tell me how that happens. Physically should not happen. <laughs> Relax. Just, if you say Give me uh as well. Three times a day. God will light it up. It's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by the teammates every week. If you know, just terrible. Welcome back to Hack City. Joe DeLeon, Sean Anderson, two former college football players from the University of Rhode Island. And today we are going to be kicking off our individual preseason position rankings. We're going to be doing individual shows for the FBS and the FCS. And today we're going to be doing our top five returning quarterbacks to the college football landscape in 2024. We're also going to react to former Rhode Island head coach Dan Hurley winning back to back national titles, as well as our typical nonsense topics for the week. And also, actually, we're going to debut a new segment that's going to be coming once a week. All that coming up and more. Before we get to that, though, Sean, I, I hit my my bet. I tweeted about it. Bet Online gave me the the money I placed down on, on UConn, UConn minus six and a half. I put $38 down on it. I won 36. Mm. So we've got a whopping $71 in the account right now. We're, we're making some pretty, some pretty big strides here. I'm glad to hear it. I also... Won a UConn bet. I had a future, uh, 10 to win 40 bet online. Oh. Thank you. And then also last night I said, you know what? Why not? Let's just, if we're going all in, we're, we're going to go all in. I'm not going to sit here and hedge my bet. Good hat, by the way. I'm not going to sit here and hedge my Thank bet you. and take, and take Purdue and just come out with 20 bucks. No, 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 no. I jacked the spread up 12 and a half UConn. Thank you. I'll take it. I'll take it. I like the win. Thank you. UConn. You were a wagon all year. You were a wagon in the tournament. You were the best. And bet online. All of us that were betting on you, we're happy. Bet online. You get the latest stats, news, scores available for your uh, to follow your favorite teams. So you're not sitting there like some dummy root waiting for Zach Eady to hit a left-handed hook shot. It wasn't going to happen, Joe. It wasn't going to happen. That's good coaching from Hurley. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online where the game starts. Your reads confuse me so much because we're you're going like 75 in the left lane and then suddenly we're at a stoplight. Like it, it, I, I, I like I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think that you you very in depth reads, but I've, I'm starting to notice like recently you've been doing this thing where you start picking up steam, picking up steam, and we're like at full speed, and then you go bet online where the game starts or whatever the new new tagline is. Thanks, man. Uh, do, have you noticed that you're doing that? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I got a little distracted at the end of this. I saw an email right under cams from goodcleanhumor.com. I don't know how I got that. Goodcleanhumor.com. I know. I didn't sign up for it. I, I like bad, dark humor. <laughs> this is not me. Are you signing me up for bad sites, Joe? No, I mean. What do you call a retired cowboy? Is this in the email? Do I have to sign up to get the punchline? Oh my God! What a rug pull. Well, we're not going to make you sign up for punchlines here on our terrible no. show. God. So, as we mentioned earlier, UConn won their national title. We don't typically really talk basketball in this show, but I thought that it was necessary just to share a quick reaction to UConn beating Purdue, Dan Hurley getting back-to-back -back national titles. Because when we were at Rhode Island, when we were playing football, when we were sharing athletic facilities, when we were members of the student sports media at Rhode Island. Dan Hurley was at the very end of his time coaching the Rhodey Rams. It's really weird. I don't know about you, but it's very weird to see that Rhode Island and a guy that we walked past in the hallways who was, by the way, as intense in just a, a in his gait as you could expect when you're walking past him in a hallway seeing this guy on a daily basis and now he's the best coach active coach in college basketball is so disorienting I, like, I don't know about you but it's just it, I, I never would have thought that we would have been in this position it's kind of crazy that Rhode Island if there was some way that they had any little bit of money and they could have kept them 
I kind of wonder where Rhode Island would be right now, but they obviously were never going to be able to keep him. Hurley's a great coach. Uh, he, I mean, he's he lives, breathes, and and will die college basketball. Everything about him is the best and the worst of college basketball. Whether it's him screaming on the sidelines, if you love it or you hate it, that's college basketball. He's a little bit of everything rolled into one great coach, uh, and it's really impressive. And I don't think it's just Rhode Island here. I think it's it's kind of if you play FCS football, you're likely to play with a dude in, if you play four years uh, that should go to the NFL. It, it's unlikely that you play with one that will, but you you kind of you're around enough talent over four years where you're like, okay, cool, I've expanded my horizons. In Rhode Island, it's kind of it's okay, cool. You're you're meeting people, a lot of people from Jersey, New York. There's a lot of outlets, but but Rhode Island institutions, the people that are the institutions at Rhode Island, they're kind of lifers. Uh, so seeing Hurley there and see him kind of evolve into an institution in the state and then take that institution to UConn and, and then win a couple championships. I love it. Go ahead. Do it. Me, me and Joe are trying to take our institutions out of Rhode Island. But for the it, it's just a, a weird circumstance where a lot of people stay home, become the Rhode Island hero. And uh, and that's what that's what happens. But I guess it was just time to go. And he made the right call because UConn had the resources and Rhode Island is, is like, it's kind of UConn junior, right? It's a basketball school. They have football, they have other sports, but it's all getting pumped into basketball. And you rec- you're in a great hotbed for recruiting in basketball, but UConn just has a better ring to it. And that's because the women's team was so good for so long. Uh, the men's team had a championship, I think in the 2010s uh, with Shabazz Napier. I'll always remember uh, he was on the team. Uh, and, and, Okay, cool. Fortune favored it. It worked out well, and he went back to back. Really impressive stuff. And I also, I remember like a week ago, a lot of Rhode Islanders were in a bit of a tizzy because he referenced how when he was at Rhode Island, Coach K approached him and said to him, hey, you know, it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to move on to a bigger opportunity. And all these Rhode Islanders who think that the world only encapsulates the board. You know what I'm talking about, right? The, uh, Uh, The bubble. Yeah. They, they think that just the borders of the state of Rhode Island is the entire planet of Earth and the entire United States of America. So they were upset with that notion. I mean, I, I respect the hell out of them. It makes me feel good knowing that you can have association with Rhode Island and still find success. That's, that's what, would you, what, what would you say if Dan Patrick came up to you and said, Joe, it's time for you to move on. Take the next step. And then people started hating on you. What? That's Dan Patrick telling me, you know, right. giving me some advice. I'm I'm going to hear I'm going to hear him out and start weighing my options a little more than I have been previously. I completely understand with it. Get over yourself. All right, you're going to get another coach uh, if you're bummed out cuz Archie Miller's a duke in the bed in the A10. Be mad about that. Don't be mad that that Hurley's been gone for a while. Get over yeah, it. Yeah, I I take a lot I mean I made a little bit of a, a comedic jab there at the end. I'm speaking facetiously for any Rhode Islanders who don't understand what sarcasm is. But I will say this, I though, I, I take pride. No, they don't. Uh, very similar to South Carolina fans. I take pride, though, in the fact that that we have association with somebody like this. And, and like, I have no direct relationship to Dan Hurley. I, I just think it's cool that we can sit here and say that he spent time at Rhode Island. You That's know, one of our guys. You can right. say it. But the problem is, unfortunately, now, if whenever the UConn games are going on, if you if you're with the same people, they're gonna start telling your story for you, mockingly at least. Is like, hey, you know, Sean went to college and Hurley was there. They were best friends, and you're like, no. <laughs> wait, does that happen to you? I'm, does that happen Joe, for you? They were finishing my sentences before they even started. Uh, it was the worst game ever. It was, hey, you know, uh, I actually was at school when uh, Hurley was there. We talked a couple times and we got dinner. It's like, and then you got to correct, and you're just getting, you're just getting crucified trying to watch a game. It's a, I live horrible. in a den of haters. I live in a den of haters that can't let you have one affiliation, but they won't stop stop talking about when they were at VCU and they saw Taco Fall play in the in the round of sixty four. Yeah, break. right, right. Those same people are always the ones yeah, who are yeah, yeah. hating ass haters. Oh, I, I happened to I happened to walk past, uh, or I happened to see LeBron once when he was. I was sitting in the lower LeBron. bowl of the stadium and I saw LeBron. Like it's not the same thing. They they did a pretty good job though. Like they they nailed the inflection and they nailed the tone. So I had nowhere to go, and I just had oh. to start yelling. Well, that's 
that's a usually a good solution. Too funny, I got to get out of it. If there's, I got to punch myself out. I do not like being in that corner. Ho- hopefully, we don't have any yelling that's going to come from us sharing our top five returning quarterbacks in college football. So I, I like to when I do these lists. I don't know how you constructed yours, but I like to blend accomplishments with a little bit of projection. I don't like to do one or the other. I look at guys and what they did last year and what it means for what they could do in this upcoming season. And just a nice spot of like, where are we at right now? And who is the best positioned to succeed? We're going to alternate in ascending order. Like we typically know to descending or descending. If we start with the lowest number, I always mix the two up. Well, technically the lowest number is the highest number. Uh, so okay, we're right. five to one, that would be descending. Okay. Descending order. Nice. Try, Matt, f- man. I want to curse at you, but I'm trying to be better. Number five for me was Shadur Sanders. By the way, if we have a same guy on the list, share who where that guy is on your list, okay? After I oh, okay. one. Shadur Sanders is my number five, the Colorado quarterback. I, I've seen him placed a little bit further down on a number of other lists. Um, I think that Shadur showed us in a very small sample size in the beginning of the season when he was fully healthy and everything was going really, really well, that he has every intangible instinct and trait and capability to be one of the best quarterbacks in college football. And I think that Colorado might not be in this position. I'm not one of those hacks that's going to sit here and say, Colorado is going to be a top 25 team and that they're going to go on to the college football playoff. I'm not a dipshit. I'm not going to sit here and say that. But I think that they're going to improve from the 4-8 and eight record that they had last year because their offensive line is going to be better. They've got a couple more added weapons. With that helping him, I think he does enough to really properly position himself to be one of the better quarterbacks in the country. I just love the way that he plays the game and how natural he feels at it. And I tend to gravitate to guys who are natural at playing quarterback rather than just going with dudes that are full full on traits. We already have the J.J. McCarthy conversation, why I'm not the biggest fan of him. I tend to turn to Someone like Shadur Sanders who just feels like they're so easy and they know how to make the right plays. And if it wasn't for shit offensive line play last year, he probably would have finished the year a lot better. You know, he might have been uh, in a lot higher and a lot more of these statistical categories than what he had where he was projected to eventually finish. Way to way to stick with that no cursing jag, Joe. That was great. Uh, I had Shador at. Well, number I wanted three. to get I wanted to get really graphic, but I wasn't. I would. That's what I meant. I was trying to hold myself. You have you have him at number three. Number three. At times when I was constructing my list, I wanted to make him number one. At times I was thinking, I don't know. That would have been bad. I would definitely would have gotten upset. Oh, I'm sorry. That would have upset you. Uh, Me thinking that Scherzer Sanders could be the hope uh, that that a certain team might need. Uh, Regardless, before Colorado was totally figured out last year because they had an unbalanced team and they just weren't, they weren't built yet. Uh, It was dynamic. It was fun. And it was led by Shadur Sanders, who was at times looking unstoppable. And even if we're taking the hype aside, if there was a four-week Heisman, he was winning it. Uh, No matter who else he was going up against. I don't care. He had a better month than Caleb. He had a better month than uh, Jaden Daniels. Better month than Drake May. It was awesome. And everyone can say it was awesome, but they got figured out. This year, I'm hoping there's some more due diligence uh, with the Colorado uh, coaching room. And they don't get figured out. As early, if we could push it back a month and then a month and then a month in four straight years, then guess what? You got a great program cooking. Push the f- push it back a month, and maybe we're, we're having some real conversations about Colorado uh, next season. But Sanders, it, it's just he's at everything at the pocket when it's clicking. You're just like, ah, oh, this can't get much better. Oh, what do you do? He just made a defensive lineman look silly, then drop a, a 30 yard dot to a, a crossing wide receiver. Great. That's perfect. When it's not great, oh, he just took a crazy big hit, and now it looks like he's getting a a, a tag bit flustered, and he just might have thrown a pick or a ball at the receiver's feet. Find the middle ground. You have a great quarterback, and you're gonna you're gonna win some games uh, riding along with him. So I I think Sanders deservedly top five. I want him higher. I want him lower, but I had to stick him at three. Uh, That was the smart play for my list. Who was your number five that you had? Uh, Number five, Dylan Gabriel. Uh, for Oregon and my honorable mention just left off the list uh, Jalen Daniels Kansas and I know I'm certain he's on your list Uh, but no no he's not on my list he has been I mean he's fun he's a really fun football player but like he's he's barely played 
any games. Like, I mean, he's got two like half seasons under his belt. I, I can't get behind a guy who's barely played. I don't know what a full season of Jalen Daniels. You're looks Jayhawk like. Joe. Every year what the Kansas every time about? every time Kansas gets a win, Jayhawk Joe comes out and he starts to talk about how fun Kansas is and how Kansas is. They a wagon. are they are fun, but I also Jason Bean was the starter for a bunch of their games last year. Like, I, I can't I can't we'll back talk. a guy who barely played. But your number five, sure, Gabriel. Okay. Uh, Dylan Gabriel my, thoughts. My number five, Dylan Gabriel. Uh, I think that him going to o- Oregon uh, right now is better than Bo Nix was when he went to Oregon. So he's in my top five based off of that. Uh, and if he can leave with the same incremental improvement, even in one year, if he can get one year of Bo Nix improvement during this season, he'll be a phenomenal quarterback. Mm-hmm. He really has. He really can. He's got the tools. It, it always felt disjointed at uh, at Oklahoma. It didn't feel like there was really a belief in the offense every time they played. Hey, where's the star? Hey, we got this quarterback. He's pretty good. It never fully clicked. At Oregon, they make things click. Uh, whether whether you like it or not, they're going to make you click in some way when you join that offense. So I think Dylan Gabriel, it's going to be an interesting season, and I believe uh, that, that he will also have a good season. Dylan Gabriel was my number three quarterback, so we're, we're mm. kind of swapping your – I, I mean, I'm really high on what he's going to do. He is the, 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 like the truest form of a college quarterback that definitely won't pan out in the NFL. He's undersized. He's got a middling arm, but what was so fantastic for him last year was the way that he was able to be so consistent and steady in short and intermediate areas. He's not somebody that I'm going to ask to stretch the field. Bo Nix was capable of stretching the field, and they didn't even really call on him much to do it. What led to success for Oregon was the fact that they just constantly distributed the ball to their playmakers, and he was playing like a point guard role. And I think that Dylan Gabriel gives me Nate Robinson, Allen Iverson, point guard vibes playing the quarterback position. He's just a facilitator. He's a distributor. And he's also a pretty underrated athlete in terms of his pocket presence. What we saw from him against Texas, I think, is indicative of what he could be at Oregon. I think that their offensive line is so steady. I think that Will Stein is such an underrated offensive coordinator and that deserves way more recognition and love for how dynamic and creative he is. They took, they managed to improve from what was already an explosive offense under Kenny Dillingham. He took it and ran with it and made it even better. So I think that Will Stein and and Dylan Gabriel are going to work perfectly together and to add into this and, and to round this out. He deserves to be the second guy I brought up in the in the Heisman conversation because of what he brings to the table, the accomplishments that he has, all the games that he's won. And then on top of this, the perfect marriage of offense with those talents. It, you couldn't have mapped this out any better. No, I'm excited for it. Uh for some it, it that that stupid school in that in, in Oregon. Every year I'm ready to be out and then they do something that makes me like, oh, they continue to be relevant and interesting. So I'm going to respect that and appreciate it. And I'm, I'm just I'm not a Ducks fan, but I'm going to roll with the Ducks because I, I, I'm enjoying how they've been conducting business lately. My number four, and this was one guy that I, it pains me whenever I got to give him any love or recognition, but Quinn Ewers from Texas. Mm. He is one of the perfect examples of just like wildly inconsistent. The injury proneness sometimes really frustrates me, but I have to acknowledge he took a massive step forward from 2022 to 2023 that he, now that he was more healthy, I think we're starting to be reminded why at one point he was considered to be one of the greatest quarterback recruits that's come out in the past decade. He's got all the tools. He's got all the, you know, the, the traits, but he just needs to get there finally as a decision maker. I want to see a little bit more cold bloodedness that he didn't really totally show until midway through the third quarter in the Fiesta Bowl. But we know that it's there, and I think it could be unlocked. He kind of reminds me of CJ Stroud in a way where it's all there, but it doesn't always show up on the field. And maybe this is the you know the real ascension year for Quinn Ewers to prove that he should go in the top ten of the next NFL draft, and that he is going to maybe cement himself as Heisman Trophy contender. More importantly, Texas's success, if they want to win a national title this upcoming year, I think is purely going to be based on does Quinn Ewers take another step forward? And there's a lot of potential for it because he's being coached by one of the best head coaches and offensive minds in the sport. Joe, do you remember uh, when Baker Mayfield took his draft photo? Mm -hmm. Do you remember his draft photo, who he was replicating? 
Yes. Uh, he, he was replicating Brett Favre. Okay. And Baker Mayfield wasn't Brett Favre. Uh, you know who is Brett Favre? Quinn Ewers. Quinn, Quinn Ewers. That's, he's my number one on this list since you brought him up. I think if you want Brett Favre and you wait, really he's want number to... one on your list. Wait, wait, that yeah, just completely one. moved past me. God, yeah. uh, 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 continue. The, uh, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'll let you voice it. I like, I like to bounce. I like to have your thoughts bounce. I mean, you know, there's the, thoughts the, off me, and then I'll, I'll there's, rebut. There's just one singular guy that is blatantly more accomplished than him. I'm gonna save it for later. Go ahead. I mean, Brady was more accomplished than Favre, so was Manning, but they weren't Favre. Ewers is Favre. Ewers is the Favre. Everyone's been waiting for the gunslinger to return. Every, Collinsworth, every every week, every Sunday, you hear him. Oh, he's he got some of that Brett Favre gunslinger in him. No, the hell he doesn't. You know why? The Brett Favre gunslinger is still in college. He's playing for Texas. He's not going to win a championship with Texas. He's going to take him to the playoffs. Uh, but that's who he is. It's finally happened. Finally, after all, Joe, how many dudes have we seen get that title? Try to do the photo. Try to be that guy. They can't. Ewers can. It, it, it just keeps on clicking. He's not going to. He, he'll fill up the stat sheet sometimes. He'll he'll break your heart sometimes. But what he does is he's electric when he gets the ball in his hands. So it's my comp. This is my comp. Ewers. Yes. I, 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 don't, I don't know why I'm... Um so surprised you are the biggest Quinn Ewers glazer for a non-Texas fan that I've ever interacted with. I, I'm, I mean, I like fun quarterbacks. You're so, oh, you're such a hack. You're such a hack. I, I, that's why I'm not doing a, a big, a big time debate show with you, Joe. I'm telling you the quarterback that I like, and it sounds like you want to let me ha go ahead. Go, go nope. ahead. Please, please get on your nope. soapbox. Please, please. No, I'm going to I'm going to save it for when I share my number 1 cuz I don't want to get ahead of myself just yet. Who's sure. your number okay. 4? Number 4. Oh, Cam Ward. Transferred to Miami? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a guy that I think you might be leaving off this list that's going to I know there's a guy upset. I'm leaving off. I'm I look. There's people that are getting left off. Again, my rules have been restricted to just 5 quarterbacks, so I had to make my list. I'm not making these rules. I get texts from a, 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 a just you know an outwardly being hey, control we're, freak. We're, we're both producers. You can, you can contribute and and ask to do more. I mean, this is I'm not at the executive producer. I gave it. I gave an honorable mention. I did do more. All right, go ahead, Cam Ward. All right, it's like you're you watch him play, and at times you're like, oh, this looks like me playing Madden, and then there's times where he plays and he's like, Oh, this looks like me getting my ass beat in Madden. And it, 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 he is. All right. How about this black Brett Favre? That's what we get from Cam Ward. He's got a cannon. He can hit is, the mid is, intermediate. Are you just, wait, are you just going to create a list of different guys that have different versions of Brett Favre? Is that what, you know this, what? Is, this is? Did Carson Beck, taller, bigger headed Brett Favre. Ug That's ugly Brett Favre. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, continue with Cam Ward. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, this is my Brett Favre list. I, I'm just, I like him. I like, I like what he, I like what he did in the FCS. I like what he did when he first got to the FBS. Took some lumps, was electric. Got another year under his belt. What happened? What's going on? What's going on at Wazoo? Oh, they have this electric quarterback that came up from the FCS. He's been torching us. Okay, cool. What happens this offseason? Is he going to the draft? No, he's sticking around, getting a bag, going to Miami. Best quarterback they've had there since. Give me a name, Joe. Give me a name. I'm trying to remember for one for uh, you. Bernie Kozar. Probably. He's the man. Uh, Cam Ward, keep your eye on him. He's going to make the ACC fun. Clemson is going to be no fun this year. Florida State, maybe. Uh, but Miami might be the fun team this season because uh, the quarterback that they have. He would have probably had been my honorable mention. Like if I had one, I debated him or Shador at, at number five. I I just love all the traits. You know, you're, you're talking about the gunslinger mentality. It, it, he's unreal with how quickly he can just drive the ball down the field. And, and what I talk about, again, I'm going to say this a million times over, instincts, instincts, instincts. How easy are you in your decision-making 
that you can always find ways to distribute the ball despite the odds being against you. And I, I look at the Washington State game, or the Washington game rather, when Washington played Washington State last year, where nothing was working, but he still found ways to keep them in the game. And all he needed to be was given a chance, and he kept the game close. He kept putting points on the board. So I, I like Cam Ward. I think that he is going to ascend further and further up this list as we continue on throughout the 2024 season. We already shared our number threes. Yours was uh, Shador Sanders. Mine was Dylan Gabriel. My number two is Jackson Dart from Ole Miss. I have been banging the table for Jackson Dart. I remember I had a couple mouth breathers on Twitter that last year even tried to say that uh, Spencer Sanders was going to start over him, you know, and trying to discredit any statements that I had on Jackson Dart. should have. Jackson Dart has been one of the most rapidly improving quarterbacks in my eyes over the past couple of seasons. I think that for the way that he was hung out the dry by Lincoln Riley, forced out the door, almost hung out the dry by Lane Kiffin, the way that he has stepped up to adversity and challenges and continually improved has been really impressive to me. I also think that he is probably one of the most best positioned in terms of returning to the same roster. He's already uh, established and confident with the offensive scheme and everything that he knows what he needs to do in Kiffin's offense. The weapons around him has improved in terms of the receivers. And then the defense that's supporting him is only going to help him win more football games. I think that this is Jackson Dart season. If there is a guy that is going to go full Jane Daniels, Joe Burrow, that is going to have an out of nowhere Heisman ascending season, I think if I were to pick my long shot that everyone's going to be like, you're out of your goddamn mind. And then he's standing there at the podium with the trophy in his hands. It is Jackson Dart. You got Jackson Dart for Heisman. Just just want to get that one more time. Yeah, Jackson Dart for Heisman. You're a crazy person. You know that. You're just a crazy person. Eat you're talking ass. about you're talking about defensive support for college quarterbacks in the top five. College quarterbacks should be torching everybody. You shouldn't even ask about the defense. Jackson Dart is no, no. Is this who you were talking about me leaving off? I hope it yes. was. Yes. That you're wrong because you don't know me and you don't respect me. Who did you I've think I meant? Word. Who I've did never... you think I meant? Noah Fafita. I don't know anybody. Uh, else. Don't uh, don't don't do that. He's fine. He's fine. But Jackson Dart, any of the bad games that he had was not because of him. It was because of poor in game decision making by Lane and a lack of a, a lack of weapons to distribute the ball to. You said he's going to have a Joe Burrow season. He's going to be that type of guy. Yeah. No, no, Joe, no. He might, he maybe is cracking my top 10. I have remained consistent in some of my projections. Now I have, I swung and missed horribly with Jane Daniels. I, I like slammed my hand on the table saying he will not win the Heisman Trophy as aggressively as I possibly could. Couldn't have been more wrong. But I did say that Michael Penix was going to be at the Heisman podium at the end of the year, and he was. Are you sitting over here chasing penny stocks here, hoping to hoping to make it big? Oh, all I do is chase penny you're stocks, chasing brother. Penny stocks over here. All right, I'm telling you about blue chip guys. That's what I'm giving you. Keep to on, keep on hunting in the gutter uh, with Joe, looking for your pennies. All right, tell me why you stupidly have Carson back at at number number two what, number two yeah he's a really good quarterback he's got you know he he's led the georgia offense he stepped in in very high pressure situations he improved throughout the year it's i started seeing him develop the the offense uh change from hey this is the georgia offense to the carson beck led georgia offense it wasn't just hey we got these guys out here and they know how to score it's hey this kid's getting better he's commanding it he's got the confidence he's marching him down the field i love that love seeing it He's a great. I think he. I think he's a very good quarterback. He he delivers the ball. His motion's still a little. It's still a little too much wind up for me. I know he's very tall. He's lanky, long neck, bulbous head. Get it. But if he can shorten up that motion some, I don't think he takes sacks. I think he's a very. I think he he reads the defense well. He's probably. Oh. I mean, if there is a Heisman favorite, I would probably get. I would probably say Beck is the Heisman favorite. See, he should be your number. So. He should be your number one with that logic, and he is but my number one. To, if he's trying Wait. to do what you were, you were going to carve him up. No, he has. He out of any of these guys has the most accomplishments. Had the best season last year out of any of the guys that we're talking about. 
he hit the ground running quicker than anybody that, that we're discussing on today's show last year. When there were serious injuries to the offensive line, to Brock Bowers, to Ladd McConkey, yep. he still found ways to win games and yep. to look impressive in doing so. He also, if it wasn't for maybe a little bit of a slow end to his season, probably could have been at the Heisman podium. He, he was on that trajectory in the middle of the year. I think that Carson Beck brings so much to the table in terms of experience, in terms of the roster around him, in terms of the coaching staff around him. And again, just the naturalness, the fact that he could just step in and play right away. I I can't. Yes, Quinn Ewers, this is this is the whole debate. Quinn Ewers is, is more physically gifted than Carson Beck. But Carson Beck is a far more cerebral player than He's Quinn Ewers. He's more of a general. Is. I'll give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Beck's more of a general. That's fine. If, but, you if, know, I, if I gave wait, if I gave both of these guys the ball with two minutes to go to win a football game, Carson Beck's getting the job done. I don't trust Quinn Ewers. Cars, Carson Beck would go down and win the football game, but he'd leave 20 seconds on, and then Ewers would go down, get him 40 yards, and they get a game winning field goal because he would pull something out of his hat. All right. It, it, it's it's general versus Ronin. All right. It, it, this is what we got. You want Rambo or do you want you want the guy that can lead the army? All right. We'll see. Sometimes I like the Rambo guy. Sometimes I like the general guy. I, you know, right now I'm liking Rambo. That's who I like, and that's yours. Another, another weird comp. I, I'm not saying the comps have been home runs today, but I, that is what I'm trying to. Paint, I'm trying to create the universe. Pardon me. All right, I want to debut our new segment before I have to hop off for a guest spot that I agreed to do. Um, the new segment that we're going to be doing every single once a week probably on the Thursday episode. Uh, we are going to be rating male living spaces uh, that we find on Twitter, that we find on Reddit. And I would like to implore our listeners, if you would like to send to us your best setup, uh, whatever it might be. I'd love to see your living just room, your bedroom. And you know what? Dudes, this is just your setup. All right. Yeah. yeah I don't, I, we're not asking for specifics. Whatever you think your setup is, you think it's your desk, your gaming setup, your TV lounge setup, whatever. That's the, you get one setup though. You can't be like, oh, here's the full tour. No, no, just the setup. So we're popping this bad boy up on the screen right now for anybody. I've been doing a good job of that, by the way. I keep, I, I have not forgotten to put those on the screen. So we're, 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 we're on a, a three game hitting streak right now. So this <laughs> one was posted by uh, Chris Gerard, uh, who had tweeted that he helped his friend move into a new apartment, rate the setup. In this picture, those on audio, we have a shade in the background directly behind what looks like an older TV with a very thick white frame, almost looks like a, like a computer monitor. The blinds are crooked, which is just yeah. great. There's a nice big tree in the background. We got it on the folding table. Folding table is always underrated, always quality. We've got a really thick carpet. And then we've got two, two matching tan folding chairs. Uh, some sort of a cloth they, hanging off of one of them. And then the third one is more of like a, a outdoor. A I don't know if I class it as a beach classified it's as a an, beach chair. I'd, I'd say it's a new like age a, beach chair. It's more of one of those chairs that your dad brings to a soccer game. Oh, okay. That works. Yeah. Yeah. Like a recreational chair. Sure. Let's go with that. Um, your thoughts on what you would rate this out of a 10. Just, just quick, quick takeaways here. Yeah, uh, the the what I would call uh, communion communion hall chairs, uh, the church chairs, the tan with a little bit of foam padding, but they fold up nicely. Mm -hmm. Those are a ten that that needs to be incorporated. I remember when I had my male living space when we were, I was living with you, I just had a kitchen chair, no recline. It was just a kitchen chair, stiff Wait, back, terrible. We need a you need to pull up a picture if you have it not today, like but next show we, we that we do this, we need to you need to pull up a picture of that. I, I wonder if, if I, I have one. that. Yeah, Continue. yeah, I got. Uh, the whole, here's, here's why this lip male living space is a 10. All right. This male hasn't figured out about, uh, blackout curtains yet, or really blind effective blinds because you don't as need you them. See, the blinds are up. There's, there's no reason for, for it even to be sitting the, the, the bunch of blinds to even be crumpled in the middle. There's already sunlight just penetrating through them. No matter what the TV is terrible. The rug is okay. Uh, I think that rug could actually get kind of cozy in the winter. Uh, I mean, the cable showing, I don't see a, uh, a gaming system yet. 
I don't know. So it's just three dudes maybe watching TV? Maybe? maybe, Or maybe it's just for company. You, you know what the biggest standout to me here is? Look look to the far right at the next at the wall and then look behind the TV. The TV is not plugged in. It nah. is not near an outlet. The closest nah. outlet is all the way on the far wall. So I look obviously this is not a long-term setup. But we've already fi- I you can tell that they set the TV up and the table up first and they didn't bother to check where the nearest outlet is. That I mean that is a, 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 the only solution here and the only appropriate solution Sean is not moving the TV, but rather either just sliding it over slightly. I'm, I'm saying don't like re- relocate walls. Don't do that. Just slide it over a little bit so it's off center. Or you get two power strips and you daisy chain them together so that it then reaches the, the socket in the wall. Hey, I Joe, don't worry. The, solution. <laughs> the TV is off center. In case you thought it was going to be right in the middle of the window, the table is is halfway in the middle of the window. So you're literally just getting half window, half TV, worst glare possible. But I'm now getting consumed again by this little doily or towel in front of the middle chair. And, and Dude, maybe what is that... that? I hate to go on a limb and say that this might be a, a creature of innovation, but that could be a ball towel. That's what that could be. It could be a, a piece of towel stapled onto the chair, into that fabric for possible male uncomfortability. That's the only, that's, that's all I have for it. Like, I just genuinely don't know what else that could be sitting there. That's a great bubble point. Wrap, maybe? Uh, maybe that is it's bubble not wrap. New. Why would it be bubble wrap though? It ain't new. Uh. There's so much to dissect in this. It's, I mean, there's not, th- there isn't a single thing on these walls either. And, and, and like, I am, I am of the, I am of the, the, um, the community of not hanging things on walls in my living room. I had, I think I told you this. I had one time brought a girl over and the first thing, the first thing that she said, like loudly, oh my God. Like completely, like you have nothing on your walls. Like not even just like a casual comment. It was <laughs> disgust at how little I had in my old apartment, how I had nothing hanging. And I'm like, I just, I haven't been here that long. That had to have been one of the most embarrassing. Mo- I and mean, there was no second date, as you can probably imagine. <laughs> Joe, have you, see, did you see the the tweet below the the original? I was just about to bring this up. There is about a mattress. The bed. And I know, I think you're a fan of the mattress on the floor. I love the mattress on the floor. I love the what was probably previously a white um a white pillowcase that is now extremely stained. Yeah. And then uh, the positioning of it is great pa- because we can open the, the 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 sliding door and you get some nice air coming in. I like that. Let me tell you why this bedroom's a 10 and I'll try to make it quick, all right? Cuz I know you got to jump. Okay. Uh, as someone who was on a bed on the floor for a while before my parents bought me a new bed and bed frame, uh, I will, I'm not sitting here claiming I was from uh, that I made it out the mud. But uh, there was about a two month, maybe three month stretch where my bed was just on the floor and it was fine. It was in eighth grade. It didn't matter. I didn't need my bed to be elevated. I loved it. I love just, hey, cool. I'm in. I'm, I, I could just drop right to the floor, right in my bed. Additionally, yellow pillow on the bed, Joe. That is, and it's a rare sighting a near perfect uh, man's yellow pillow. I have mine. Uh, I don't know if you have yours. I don't think you're dead. I'm a gray. I am a gray pillow guy. Yeah. I, I, I I just don't see your family getting away with the, the yellow pillow thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have mine. I love it. It's, it's my cast iron skillet. Uh, It's just been perfectly seasoned over the years to give me a perfect, you know, just a cool sleep. All right. Hey, 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 judgment, man. Why don't you calm down over there? All right. Mm. Who, who's dealt with, who's been able to sleep well ever since we've known uh, each other and who's always struggled with sleep and caffeine intake okay, and I okay. before I go to bed and I take okay. this when I wake up and I, I'm always grous, drowsy well, and relax. I'm always groggy and cranky. I never sleep good. I'm Joe DeLeon. And then you see me, Ray of Sunshine, Sean Anderson. What happened? Oh, me and my nice little yellow pillow. We had a great eight hours last night. A great night. I'm sorry that you're a thoughtless oaf who can just lay down and fall asleep. Okay. I'm sorry that, that, that I don't share that trait with you. God forbid. When was the last time you watched your pillowcase? Oh, I watch my pillowcases all the time. All the time. I don't believe you. Probably I don't believe you for one bit. What do you mean? Why wouldn't you? You think I like waking up and having, having filth on my face from a dirty pillowcase? No. At Joe DeLeon at Sanderson radio folks. Thanks for tuning in. Up. 
Hit the sub. What do you th- What do you mean? What there wasn't a there wasn't a, like, a challenge. There wasn't a fight. You challenged the yellow pillow. I mean, this is a this is a win. Oh, go representing all thoughtless oafs, as you like to put it. Yeah, hit, hit okay. I hit the subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in. Leave a five star review on audio. We're sorry that you had to listen to this. Enjoy the rest of your week.